Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for the short but sweet introduction. Uh, we are uh, having a panel, we've called it, or it's called female entrepreneurship, but of course we are all concerned with that, and it's not only for women. Um, so I run a blog, actually, that's called Steel in Berlin, where you can find a lot of brunch, lunch, and dinner, and drink recommendations. But I also started a club in the beginning of this year. I started the Feminist Food Club together with Ruth Bartlett. And by now, we are a very lively network of over 500 women. Uh, we have a very vivid Facebook group. And, <laughs> and we do monthly meetings in Berlin and, uh, where we discuss our experiences, where we network, and of course, vent about all the bad things happening. Um, our next meeting, by the way, for all the women in the audience, if you want to join, is on October 30th. And we have a special topic. It's going to be about wine. We're going to talk about women in the wine world. And if you want to join us, you can just find the Feminist Food Club group on Facebook. And that's it. That's all, the, all you need to do. Uh, now, to this panel. Um, it is rather obvious that uh, although women are a part of the bar industry um, and definitely a big part of the workforce in the bar industry, when it comes to representation in the media, when it comes to winning awards, and of course when it comes to ownership, women kind of seem to fall short. Uh, they're paid less, they're written about less, and there are more often than the male counterparts object or subject to harassment, which is then often sexualized. Uh, today we want to talk about why that is and find reasons maybe why women are less visible. And to do so, I invited uh, three women uh, who are all on the forefront of their respective business. Uh, first, I want to introduce you to Liv Fleischacker, who is a journalist born and based in Berlin. Uh, she writes for Munchies, Food 52, Chickpea Magazine, and obviously Mixology. And a little over a year ago, she wrote an article on sexism in the bar industry, uh, where she was calling for a correction of the systematic sexism in the bartending world, um, which was well received, but you can tell us uh, later about that. Um, my second guest is Karina Soto Velasquez, uh, who was born and grew up in Colombia, then moved to France, and worked as a bartender since 2007 in, Par in one of Paris' first craft cocktail bars, uh, and started, oh, you gotta help me with how to, Kishorik, Kisorik, Kisorik Projects in 2011 who by now own five restaurants and bars in Paris. Uh, on top of that, she won several awards, has held speeches all over the world, and has supported women in the bartending world for years. And my last but not least guest is Cordula Lange from uh, uh, Brick Bar, currently from Brick Bar. She's one of the most uh, renowned bartenders in Germany. She used to work at Beckett's Kopf, Bellini Lounge, Lebensstern, Monkey Bar, um, and she's also the founder of uh, Barmaid Olympics, the German equivalent to the female-only speed rec competition. Um, yep, welcome. Thank you for joining. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> so the first question is pretty blunt, and it's for all of you. Um, is it difficult to be a woman in the bar industry? <laughs> we all give our... Yeah? Go. <laughs> Should I start? Um, I think... I don't like that question very much because <laughs> I don't think it's more difficult for a woman than a man. I think uh, we all... If I ask a man that is my age and has the same a longevity bartending, we all have the same injuries. We all actually suffer kind of like the same struggle. Um, I don't think there is a difference literally on the job. There is a difference on, I would say, education 
like the customer, for example, when he sees a woman behind the bar, his attitude, for example, there is a lack of education, I would say, but I do not believe it's harder for a woman than a man to become a good bartender. Yeah, so um, I think the same. Uh, so I think the same, but um, during uh, because of the Bamak Olympics, I met a lot of girls, young girls. They want to work behind the bar, and they didn't get that much support from their bosses. So especially in bigger hotels, uh, grand hotels, where the bar managers are a little bit uh, older, so and they didn't support them. So it's there's more the classic way that the girls go into the service and. Uh, the, get, the man's behind the bar, so we have to support them that they can say, okay, I want to be behind the bar, so can I go into the bar and just try it and to get more support from the bosses, I think. So this is a lot of, not in the big cities in Germany, so Berlin, Hamburg, it's more easy, but in the smaller towns, or especially also at the sea, the hotels, they have the problems there. So I don't work behind the bar, but I often interview bar owners and bartenders, and I do think that I get treated differently than my male colleagues, sometimes in a more condescending, hey, sweetie, where you'd never be called, no man would ever be called sweetie way. I don't know if it makes it more difficult necessarily, but you do see that there's a different treatments, and you're immediately put into a certain category, and if you're offered drinks, I do find you're often offered the sweet drinks, lady drinks, and you get pushed into something that you never necessarily framed yourself as. And I, that's the find that I just, the part that I would like to push away from. Uh, since you have, as a journalist, you have an overview over the German scene at least, are there less women working as bartenders than men? I don't think they're necessarily less, but they're less visible and they're less celebrated. And I think that's the problem. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, well, in, in my scene, in the Parisian scene, I would say, in the craft cocktail world, you see less women than men. But if you think about every bar in the world, if you think about Irish pubs, for example, you see a lot of women bartending there. Yeah. Actually, in the hardest bars, the dive bars, or everything, there's a lot of women. Yeah. So if you actually take a larger, a broad, like, bar scene, I think we can arrive to see, like, we can see way more for women. There's just that, what you say is true, they're less celebrated and they're less recognized. But in the craft cocktail world, a little bit by what you say, like, hotels and old school mentality of hospitality, women were not part, and they were not part of cuisine, they were not part of being a metro d'hotel or being um, a, in, in big positions in the restaurant industry in general. So it's, it's been a changing through years, but it's a very old school mentality. Why, why do you think there are less women in the craft cocktail world? Sorry? Why do you think there are less women? Yeah, I think because um, they, they have to find a way out of their uh, old school mental hotel, so they have to have some points. So like we uh, own, uh, make the Barmaid Olympics for these girls also, to say, okay, you are from a smaller city, just take part, you want to be behind the bar, just discover the world behind the bar, discover our bar scene, the higher bar scene. And uh, so they have to make, we have to make some points, then they, they know, okay, I can talk with these people, they can help me, so I can write an email uh, for me, to me, to say, uh, I want to work in Berlin, I want to work really behind the bar, and I didn't get some uh, um, help from people around me, so we need a platform to say, okay, I can go there and they can help me to, to uh, really work behind the bar and meet the people that can help me, so. I think it's a lack of role models, too. Yeah. That's the number one thing. I was also just going to add to that, that um, I think often mentors are such an important thing, especially in such a craft, and you don't necessarily need a female mentor, but often men will see someone who will remind themselves of them as someone younger, and if that's usually more often than not, it is another younger man. So I think encouragement, role models, mentorship is a really, really important thing, especially in the bar industry. And I think that's where maybe we're, even though at a certain level you have female bartenders, 
they don't necessarily rise through the ranks. Did you have any role models when you got into the business? Well, I, um, when I started craft bartending, <laughs> I, um, I, I was very, um, my bosses at the time really supported me. I, uh, they were really proud and happy to, to have somebody that was just excited about what's going on. I, that's, that's true, they have always been very supportive. And uh, they introduced me actually to the New York bar scene through the women's and they, um, they give me a, the blo like a blog to research Audrey Sanders and, uh, and she became actually my role model as a cocktail maker. Uh, and then I started reading about her and see how all her goals and all these delicious cocktails that I was making at ECC at the time, come, like the old Cuban, for example, she created it. And, uh, and in all that her craft and, and her, everything she knew how to do, she became a role model in that way. But then as a, as a hard worker and model more in, in hospitality and other things, I, uh, I met incredible men in this industry that were, yeah, that were my role models in a way. Uh, being my father one, for example, that who worked in the kitchen. Um, and uh, yeah, like diverse. So uh, for me it was a little bit the same. So. Uh, for me, yeah, like my father, mother, and this thing uh, were Christina and Oli from Beckett's Cup. It was my first bar. I really worked behind the bar here in Berlin, and I, they teach me really a lot and to be careful with the drinks. And they really teach me what it means to make a good drink, to be a good host. And so this is how I came into the bar scene. So, mm -hmm. uh, you started the barmaid barmaid Olympic. What was it? Bar Barmaid Olympics. Yeah, Barmaid Olympics. Um, what inspired you? Like, why did you start that? So, uh, Julia and I, we uh, uh, were inspiring by the speed rack. So we say, okay, we want to have it in Germany too, or maybe also in Europe one time, to support the girls to say, okay, yeah, like I said before, we want to go behind the bar, we want to work behind the bar, and we want to make a little platform to... Um, yeah, that they can uh, start to have a look into the business and say, okay, um, I don't want to take part in a big competition because mostly in the big competitions are men's, also in the final then. So we create a smaller competition only for women to say, okay, you are only under women's. It's for the first time, it's much easier. You see how it works and then you can find out, is this something for me or not? That's why we raised up the Barmaid Olympics. Karina, uh, you were in a lot of in, in competitions as well. Actually, at the time I was bartending, there were not this global competition. <laughs> there was no, um, and definitely in Paris there were not. The, the first ones were in the UK or, or in the US. So I actually did a local competition called Le Trophée du Bar in Paris in 2008. And uh, that has been the only competition I've ever done. And I did won that one, but it was yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> um, but uh, I always encourage the, my teams to participate because it's a beautiful learning process. Uh, when you prepare yourself for a competition, you, you learn a lot, not only about the A brand, but the, the process of it is, is very interesting. Um, but uh, yes, I only participated in that. And back in 2008, yeah, I was the only woman in the competition and in the audience and in the jury <laughs> and I was probably... Did, did yeah. that get better? Yes, definitely. I mean, it doesn't mean... We're still one, or one girl in the jury, generally me, uh, what I'm trying to change that a lot. Um, and uh, there's still from 10 participants, probably 20%, like two will be women. I guess it's better than none or one, but uh, we still need to uh, promote them and really, like, I, I told everyone, girls and boys in the teams, to, to participate in these things, but definitely try to push the girls to be more confident and go for it. What you often hear as an argument when you talk about why are there so few women competing or why are there so few women that I've written about is that it's a reflection of the status quo, that it's, uh, there are less female craft cocktail bartenders, and that's why there are less in competitions? It's a little bit of 
everything for me. I don't, I don't know if you want to. Okay, it's a little bit of everything. There's, there's that part. Yes, we are, we're less. But if I think about Paris right now, if there's a cocktail competition and we need to choose ten participants, I can easily see five incredible women that can totally have the potential to win the competition. They just don't participate. But I think it's also, as I was saying before, is the role modeling. And when you go to participate in a competition and the judges are mainly men, that also doesn't, doesn't make any sense. When today, also in Paris, and I'm pretty sure internationally is the same, there's at least 50 women I can mention that can judge a cocktail competition properly. It's just they don't get the opportunity to do it. And why do you think they don't get the opportunity? Well, I think it's also, I, I took this, I did this introspective <laughs> this year, and uh, I actually blame myself uh, by being one of the leaders actually in the Parisian bar scene. Um, and uh, I decided, for example, that I would not judge a competition anymore by myself as a woman in the panel. Like in the panel, I would, no, I would say no to the competition if there's only me judging. If you're the only woman in yeah. a, yeah, okay. So this year I'm judging a competition. They actually, can I say brands? Yes, I imagine this is not brand, yeah. Um, Havana Club contacted me and uh, decided that I would be the president of the jury for their uh, national competition. And I said yes, only on the condition that, and they accepted. And I think this is probably the first time, definitely in France, that it's going to be three women and two men in a five judge panel of judges. Uh, Liv, what do you think can also be done to make women more visible in the competition field? I think once again, it comes down to representation really, and it's a snowball effect, right? And I see, I've joined competitions as the journalistic uh, accompaniment, and I see the familiarity of it, and really you have these workshops, they work together, and then in the future they'll hire each other, they'll work together, work together again, and I think it doesn't take that much. So I think a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of, I think the status quo excuse is inherently incredibly lazy because it, you just need to take one more step to go, hey, if we have 20 dudes competing, maybe we just need to make sure there's a couple more women in there. And I think that encouraging from all sides also and really from men, from women, and then I think within the next five years really, it can be such a snowball effect and we wouldn't need to talk about this very soon, I hope. Cordula, what would you tell a young uh, female bartender who's thinking about joining competitions but is maybe not sure yet? So I want to say just join it, try it. You have to try it. You have, when you think about take part in competitions, then you also have to make it. So when you start to think, okay, then you're in this row, okay, make it, take part and see what happens. Have a look if you, someone of your colleagues can help you and just do it and then you learn and with the next competition you learn more and you didn't have to be afraid of a competition. So my first competition I was also very afraid but after that it was like, oh, it was very nice. So friendly people, so the bartender community, they are all very friendly together. So they help you if you forgot something, if something is broken, they help you. So you don't have to be afraid. So I want to say just take part if you want, just do it. Um, all right, <laughs> when we go to the other side, that is actually um, how to get more female staff in a bar that you own. Uh, you both run uh, businesses and you both have a very female-centric staff, and you don't? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe you can talk about how you uh, whether or and then how you like to influence the process of hiring people and how you make sure that you have a 50-50 staff. So I did, I did some studies on that. <laughs> so that is probably the hardest thing to, to do because also it's the industry we are in. It's an industry that moves a lot. So we have also uh, people that are passionate and want to work in, uh, in the bar, in the kitchen, in the floor, um, and that are ready to move and grow in the company, and uh, that want to stay in this industry. And you also have a percentage of people that are uh, just 
need the job, you know, that are paying their studies or something like that. So you also need to understand there's very different patterns and careers. Um, the way we worked it this year in, in our company, I have a um, human resources uh, young woman that works in the office. And uh, we were wondering why we get so many curriculums that are mainly men, why we don't get women. Um, the only time we did an ad for one of our bars called Glass, that is a dive bar that closes at five in the morning, is quite heavy hours. It's also, I mean, it's a party place, it's not a craft cocktail bar. Uh, when we were, I mean, it's the delicious, we can make delicious craft cocktails, but it's not known by that. We did an ad that said, we're looking for somebody that wants to work hard, uh, long hours in Pigal, that is a, a quiet challenge of a district, more at that time, today is very different. Um, we basically did an ad that nobody wanted to work there. And, I only and then I received two curriculums and there were two women. So it was actually interesting as an exercise. And then uh, we apply it again this year, looking for people for newer projects and even this. And it works quite well. When actually you, the information that you put in your ad when you're looking for somebody is clear and straightforward, a woman kind of get the job right away. Either I do it or not. When it's more career inspirational, um, when it's more like, oh, we're looking for somebody ambitious that wants to grow and wants to do this. and you. You know, you put all these little birds and things around. It's actually a lot of men uh, and less women. But, and uh, we, we actually, it's a, it's a very strange pattern. I'm not, a I'm not that good in sociology or anything, but it, we, I, we figured out there was a really unbalance in the way we, uh, we write our ads. Um, promotion right now, uh, social media is huge and women are constantly on social media, way more than men. Actually, we shop a lot, uh, ads or anything, like photography, Instagram is, we, like women, we are very active on it. Even if we have actually less followers than men, what is strange, but we do, are very active. Um, we start doing little GIF and like promotion of our, we are hiring uh, in social media. And uh, the first time I saw one of like, the guy that takes care of communication in our uh, company, he did a GIF and took like the best pictures that we have of the team. And when I look at it, there were only the boys. And I was like, where are the girls? <laughs> so I was like, change me that right now <laughs> for me, only girls. And he was like, I don't have that many pictures. And I'm like, well, go and take them. <laughs> and he went and took all these portraits. And, like, and actually, we highlighted, we did a GIF of only girls, there's only one boy that appears at the end with the girls around, of our managers, our waitresses, bartenders, and everyone, we put them all together. And actually that worked really well too. And even doing all that effort that we have put on it, we still are not 50-50. I mean, we're, last time we did the balance that was for June, uh, for the presentation I did for Poo, we were at 42%, uh, 42%. but it's great but it's not yet that. And today, if I have to re-exam the company, we're probably, again, moving a lot. Probably, I don't know, at the new venue we opened that uh, right now we're 49 people. Um, I lost a lot of girls, actually, because the opening has, has been challenging. And, but I actually rehired some girls in the kitchen behind. So I lost girls at the bar, but I won in the kitchen. So I don't know, is I need to like read update it, but that's some, some of the things we have done and I have work. Liv, from your experience as a journalist and talking with a lot of bartenders, uh, what do you think women are looking for in a workplace? Like what, what would be, um, attract, what kind of workplace and conditions would be attractive to them? I think, <sighs> don't be a jackass. I don't know, it seems so easy. We're just create a space where if some jackass comes and comes at you stupidly, you feel that you can tell your boss and you know that your team has your back. And I think, I'm assuming not knowing and not being a bartender, but to know that the team has your back no matter what it is, is the most important thing. And no matter if it's some sexist commentary or whatever, but just to have a space where you can trust each other. And I think working in a kitchen, working in a bar, it's really the teamwork, you have to know each other. And to be open to that and not to shut down. And so just to create a space where you know that if something goes wrong, there are people who will help you out. 
Yeah, so for, uh, I agree. So you have to uh, uh, have a great place to work for the people. And then, so in our team, we are uh, four girls and three men. So, and it works really good. So the girls more in the service uh, because they study, but they are also interesting in the bar. And when we have time, we say, okay, come on back to the behind the bar, try some drinks. And now, if it's not so full, you can mix the drinks. So we mix it in a way. So everyone make everything, and that is really good for the team. That also. Uh, uh, that they see they also get the respect when they are interested into the bar, that they can go behind the bar and make something so, and learn from us and learn from the colleagues behind the bar. That is very important too, that they also have the support at their working place. And um, that's, that's a big topic, I guess, for a lot of women. Like how, what happens if you are in one or the other way harassed while working? This is uh, more... Yeah, more of a topic in the bar world and in the bar industry than in other um, industries, I assume. Um, so you as business owners, did you apply any methods, any special things so that you would ensure to prevent and protect your employees from that? I don't know what exactly she... <laughs> what do you mean? Can you say it again? What you did to make sure Should I start? Okay. Um, I think that sexual harassment, sadly, is, I mean, it's, it's everywhere. It's in the street, it's everywhere. I also live in Paris, where sadly in the streets it's not super fun. No, Christina? <laughs> um, so... To prevent, I think, as I said, I think it's, it's a cultural thing. Uh, there's a lot of things. I mean, it's, um, it's education, it's cultural, it's, it's at home. There's things you can't control. I can't control, I can't educate you as a human being, like there's a woman or is a man, because I have had male bartenders being harassed as well. And actually, it's worse because they really don't talk about it. They close themselves. And they actually is, is, is terrible too. And um, me as a manager, when I was managing a cocktail bar, to see the guys all closed up and angry doing cocktails and end their shift angry because a woman was throwing her ice cubes because he didn't want to give his phone number, for example. Or like women, I mean, everybody with alcohol can be completely stupid, uh, myself included. So it's a, I think it's in both sides, sexual harassment, what is really sad, and it should be a topic that is opened. Uh, women, we get more, um, I guess, it's more verbal as well, and kind of physically, like they will call you a bitch because of whatever, and it's, we're just more used to it, let's play that way, it's really sad. Um, but it happens in both sides. The way we we can't really prevent it, but the way we tell our bartenders to react is we have security guys in all our places. Uh, we have managers. Uh, talk to your managers. Like, you need to say it right away. Don't, don't let it build up. Don't actually get in a conflict with that person either. And, uh, and, you know, and if it goes really far, like, I mean, you just call the police and you figure it out, you know. Uh, it's really sad, but yesterday I was DJing at an awesome party with a lot of people of this industry having a great time, and there's a guy that comes and grabs my ass. I mean, I have to grab him by the neck and tell him to get out of here. You know, and this is just me DJing, and it's somebody from this industry last night. I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, and it's, it's just how it is. We live in a very sad world for a lot of things, and, but I think sexual harassment is, goes on both ways. Do you think um, being afraid to, of that is a reason for women to not become bartenders? But as I said, I mean, there's sexual harassment everywhere. It's not just in the bar. Like, we can't be afraid of being bartenders because we're going to be sexually harassed or because a client is going to, you know, do a whatever. Like, it happens, sadly, all, like, very often. So we can't be DJs. <laughs> we can't, you know, we can't, in a, in, like, in a party for people from the same industry. I mean, like, it's sad. So, yeah, I also don't think that it's a reason why we have a little bit less uh, women behind the bar. 
But for me, it's also important that, the pe that my team knows, okay, when something is with the customers, they have to come to me, or they can to come to me and say, okay, I sent the manager to you, so that they are out of the way from the, from the conflict. So, and also the owner of our bar, so he uh, was, is working since 20, 25 years in the bar industry. So he, he really stands completely behind us. Uh, so we know whatever happens in the bar, so with some customers, he, uh, when we get a, uh, something bad on Twitter, TripAdvisor or somewhere, so, and so he came to us and asked us what happens, and he's very friendly and say, I stand behind you, so you don't have to be afraid that you get fired when something happened like this, so he, yeah, he really supports us and say, okay, you are safe here, so we are a great team, we, I want that you work here, we, I want to uh, uh, have a bar, and I want to have a great place for people to work, so that is very important for him too. That's I, I was at the talk earlier about uh, racism in the industry also, and the Gastronomie gegen Rassismus, they have these stickers that they can put on bars, and they were calling out to have all of the bars just put the sticker on their front door or wherever you want to place it, because it does send a very strong message saying, we do not tolerate racism here. And I think that there's, and they were also calling for um, rainbow flags, so to say, you know, we tolerate, everyone is welcome, we don't tolerate any type of... Um, homophobia, racism, everything. And I think that is a really important topic and that you can also apply to sexism within the industry to immediately position yourself as a place where you don't tolerate sexism. And that's a pretty easy thing to do that sends a message and everybody who walks past it knows, maybe not go in there if I don't respect women. <laughs> if I'm that kind of douche. <laughs> Um, okay, we also uh, talked about um, media representation, so I uh, want to shift to that. Um, uh, Cordula and Karina, you've had a lot of articles written about you in the past. Do you feel you were treated in a certain way when journalists were writing about the female bartender? No, uh, so for me it's more like an honor. So I really look. Uh, I'm really happy about this that people want to show more women in articles, so that all the ladies they want to work behind the bar scene. Oh, now it's changing a little bit. It's coming more and more. So maybe I try it because I want to do it. So yeah, for me it's more like an honor. So I don't. So yeah, it's nice. So do, are you part of a lot of like lady bartender articles where it's only about females or do you feel like if it's written about then it's actually in, a, in an equal way? Sadly, the majority of that are female or ladies and that's really sad. It should be just about bartenders in general. So yes, um, at the same time it's very ambiguous because if you refuse to do it, it's like nothing is going to happen either. So it's kind of like this back and forth where, okay, I'm going to be part of this female article, but how can I make this journalist to never do that again? <laughs> and like, how we can change it um, and just have an article about the best bartenders or bartenders in the city or whatever you want to call it. Um, but uh, it is hard. It's, it's a hard compromise, but also by highlighting more women in those type of articles, I think we're moving towards a better journalism. Um, yeah, but in what in my personal case has not been just about a female bartenders because I also have the venues. And in all the articles, I always mentioned my two business partners that are men. And, uh, and I love working with them. And, uh, and if it's about bartenders, generally I mention they, that the journalist wants to write it or not, that's a different thing, but I always mention other women uh, that are part of the industry. Like this is kind of like a chain, it's not just me. Liv, you as a journalist, are you taking extra measures to make sure it's, uh, it's an even playing field? I definitely try to, if I talk about bars and I like to, I like to include bars or portray bars that I know are at least um, 
friendly <laughs> to women. <laughs> um, I, I agree it's a fine line to walk, to go between these are the female bartenders because you are shedding light on female bartenders, but at the same time, they're not great because they're females, they're great bartenders that happen to be women. And I think it's, yeah, it's a fine line to walk. I like to try to talk about places that are as diverse as possible in every sense of the word and just, but not to highlight that part, but just to say, hey, this is a great bar, you should go here. Stopunkt. <laughs> And as my uh, final question, any advice to young women who want to join the bar world in whatever? So yeah, so like I said before, just do it, keep on going. Uh, to We have Facebook, we have social media everywhere, so everyone can use it. So everyone knows the big magazine, so just go to just write some emails so oh maybe you can help me or you can help me go to the go if you have time go to bigger cities and check out the bar scene and say okay i wanted to be behind the bar and just try to get behind the bar so yeah. be persistent hmm? be persistent yeah. i would say just break all the base we all have you know like just go for it work hard don't think about there's a man or a woman or whatever. This, that's how it is. It's a job like any other. There's a career to be made. There's possibilities to grow and to do different things. And uh, just go for it. Work hard like anybody else. And that's it. I would agree with both of those things. And also just make yourself heard. Make yourself known. And do the work for yourself. And take others along for the ride. Super. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Yes. We we can't hear you. You have to come to the we, Oh, so you don't think it's a problem, so we shouldn't talk about it? No. No. I'm just... What's the problem? <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I, I just think that uh, it, when you bring up this problem about... You have to keep close to your mouth. The mic. Yeah. Like this. Taylor, please fucking no. You've done this now. You've bought, you, yeah, I've, I've brought this. I, I think I think that uh, we dancing. We can't hear around, you. You have to keep it close. To you. I think that dancing around the subject um, it, it exacerbates the subject in itself. And like, I, I'm all about fucking women doing really well in the in the industry. It's fucking great, but when when you dance around it, when you when when you make. When, when, when you go, you're making a problem out of things that aren't a problem. The funny, fun fact, <laughs> I've done a couple of um, panels on women in any kind of food or drink industry. And it's always, in the end, it's mostly like one guy who stands up and says, um, so I don't think this is a problem, so why are you talking about it? Or um, you are making it worse by talking about it. Uh, I don't agree and I think we spent the last 45 minutes explaining why we don't agree uh, and I don't I mean maybe you have another answer but that is usually my answer yeah. okay I, I really did, couldn't hear you sorry so if I understood correctly you think it's bad to talk about this topic it makes it worse to talk about the topic Sorry, I couldn't hear anything you said. So, so I'm, I'm just going to say one thing is, I, I understand that it's not, it's not like the most, um, it's a very sensitive topic, indeed. And uh, we all have, we, we all look at the problem on different angles, because we are all in a different, um, we are a different thing in this problem. Like we all play different roles. So, of course, it's not the most pleasant one, but it needs to be talked, because it is a problem. And actually, the problem is not only about men being like aggressive to women or not empowering women is also a problem with women by not standing up and by not also uh, 
like exposing himself or make value on themselves or take the, the strength of doing certain things. So it needs to be talked in both sides. And it is important because right now we were in 2017 and we still don't see as much women as men behind the bar in the craft cocktail room. Yeah, um, so we haven't really addressed the women as eye candy issue, like um, the double standard when it comes to hiring women opposed to men. Um, I remember very, very clearly a situation when I was about to hire um, an assistant bar manager and the F&B director was, and I had a candidate who was female and the F&B director, the first question he asked me was, is she hot? And how do you feel about those things when you hire people? Do you think that even as being a woman, you are guilty of that as well? That you think like most of your customers are men and it kind of feels that you have to employ somebody who is not maybe a size zero, but in some way attractive and you apply that more to women than to men, even being a woman yourself or experiencing that while being hired. Sorry, Christina, I'm going to... I think um, I think I, I didn't have it in our bar scene, so I didn't have the experience with that. So to get hired as a bar manager because I'm I'm a woman or uh, I'm looking better than the guy who made it before or the girl who made it before. So, but I think it could be a problem in some bars in some regions also in more maybe also more in hotels or other bars that when a woman looks ni better. Uh, she get the job easily. I think it's in a lot of different jobs the same problem, I think. I mean, I think that it's very offensive. And indeed, I know uh, a lot of companies do that uh, in general, not just in the bar industry. Um, indeed, that needs to change. How? I think that comes from, from actually the top, like the owners themselves the human resources person, because actually when you stop it, I stop doing interviews. I don't do interviews for every single person in my group. I have the managers and a team that does it. If that is part of like what they're looking for, because we actually, that's the way we function, that's really hard. So it's, it goes on like company philosophy in, uh, in a lot of, it's definitely how you as an owner and as an entrepreneur, you, you want to drive your company. Uh, physic assets for men or women, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I, that's not, it's not what is going to make your company function as a solid business. You need skilled people and you need people that just, or people that just want to learn and grow in the company. But that actually comes really from the top, I think. It's the same thing in the media. Like, the girls who get the attention are the pretty girls. Mm -hmm. You have to be hot, otherwise you're not material for somebody to write about you, for somebody to take your picture. It always has to be that way. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you've heard that as well. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a systematic problem, and it's a systematic problem that applies to more than just the bar industry, right? And men can age and be grisly and cool and whatever, but you have to be fuckable, sorry, to be a woman past a certain age. So. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really have an answer to this. I agree, there's definitely a double standard. And if you're not pretty, but you make good drinks, you won't get as far. I think that is just a fact right now. And I think we just need to continuously be pushing it. And <laughs> um, yeah, continuously pushing and supporting each other. Yeah. I, I just would like to say is like, um, I'm coming from Liverpool and I'm seeing so many so happening. I'm, I'm working in a kind of, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I feel so nervous about that answering. Um, in our place, I'm feeling like you seeing the difference when the, the female or the male bartender ring is serving you. And it's like, 
whoever you are, you should just kill people by kindness. And yeah. it's like, if somebody's waving on you, whatever, whatever situation is just happening, you just should explain people that you are human. That doesn't matter, are you female or you just a male? And it's like, of course, I'm having the, the, female, the female friends and it's happening for them. It's like the men are coming over the bar and it's like, just having those feelings and it's like the man in the suit, which one is coming for the fancy company, is like just let's, I'm like you having the feelings, be served. And it's like, do you know what I mean? It's like um, serving me because you are the server, because you're making the drinks for me, or like you are the human. And it doesn't matter, are you the yeah. female or are you the male? And it's also about the thing, I think. That, that men disappear, but still is, yeah. it doesn't matter, whoever you are, the thing is, what you would like to say to the people, it doesn't matter how do you like, like, yeah. that's the thing. I, I, th I would agree with that, definitely, and I think um, to the gentleman who unfortunately left, yeah. I think it's a bit of a shame, there's... Asking, there's... <laughs> asking, exactly, asking about those kind of things, like, are you feeling worse about because you are a woman? Yes, I do. Sometimes the, the, the men are coming over the bar and you're having the feelings like he's better than you. And you just would like to be for him because you are here for the customers to educate them, to show them your experience. And like, you just would like to be the best for them. And it doesn't matter who are they. And the same, it doesn't matter who are you are. You just would like yeah. to yeah. get the nice experience. It's about seeing each other and hearing each other and listening yeah. to each other's yeah. experiences, yeah. I think. That's why we're doing this here. Sister, sisterhood is powerful, my friends. <laughs> so um, I'm inviting all the... Oh, there's a... Sorry. Hola. Uh, first of all, I, I'm going to say it in the beginning and I'm going to say it in the, in the end. I'm only goodwilling. <laughs> Nothing bad about what I say. It's more like uh, my opinion than a, than a question. Actually, in first place, I think bartending is uh, more about acting, not about words. You don't, girls, you don't need meeting each other just to support yourselves. I support you. For me, female behind the bar is a spectacular thing, definitely. And it's behind the bar is more about working, not about talking, uh, not about discussing, not about. You can recognize it freely. It's like uh, all a bit of war of prejudices from men to women and from women to men. I mean, there's no need to discuss the topic, I think, because we all support women behind the bar. I support women behind the bar. I really appreciate women behind the bar. There's a colleague of mine. She's a girl. She's brand new to the business, but I support her more than the boys I support behind the bar because I know that the boys are going to attack her and not going to like her in the beginning and stuff. So I'm supportive to the, to the girl behind the bar and everything. So I think there's no need to discuss it. It's not a matter of discussion. It's more a matter of work. It's more a matter of, more matter of uh, doing your work. And that's it because... You know, know, a way of supporting, supporting women is to actually let them talk about it and let them discuss it. I know it's your way. I know it's your way. But there's no need to discuss because there's a lot of work to be done. And I really appreciate girls that, uh, you know, they say, they, I'm, I'm really supportive. I say it in the end again. I'm really more than supportive. I'm more supportive to girls than to, you, to boys. You're going to become bar. his mentor and that's fantastic. So congratulations for that. But I don't understand why you don't want to discuss. I mean, you don't want to discuss this, or you don't want. Uh, what you don't want to discuss? No, no, it's not about me. It's actually. I think it's a, the home. When you start discussing something, it makes a matter out of it. So no need to discuss it. I mean. No, but we're, just join, you know that just, by discussing, we're acting. We're becoming actives. You know, like they, they, there's nobody. I, at least uh, these three women and myself that we don't act, we act every day, all the time. Definitely. <laughs> and, what we, and what we're trying to do here about discussing about our actions is to empower other people, men and women, to continue acting. You are acting, that is fantastic, and keep doing it. But don't stop other women on acting because it needs to happen. And men can act forward too. 
definitely. I mean, if if today I couldn't be here, one of my business partner could totally take this chair and talk about how we hire women in our company and how they are supportive about having women in the company and what they do. But yeah, that, I came. I, I'm definitely third time. I'm really supportive on that. But uh, uh, it's just don't don't make a matter out of it because it's like it's bartending is the kind of job that is definitely about skills, not about... You, you are doing a very, a very good job, and keep doing it. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, hey, you also.